Well, hello scrappers, Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about cleaning up gold you get from a really dirty gold drop. So yesterday I did a gold drop out of some fairly dirty solution. Look at the lovely green color of the solution. Yes, the solutions you get when you extract gold from e-waste tend to be polluted with other metals. Copper, nickel, iron, and tin are big culprits so there was a lot of uh, other metallic salts in with the gold and when I dropped the gold out using SMB I got a colloidal gold drop very very fine gold took a long time to settle um, it's stuck to the inside of the beaker as fine gold will tend to do um, it's polluted with those other metal salts this is really very dirty gold, okay? You know, this is not the kind of gold I would want to melt down and make an ingot or a bar out of, or a bead even. This stuff needs to be cleaned up. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to clean up your dirty gold. All right, it, it's actually, it, it takes a little effort, but it's actually fairly simple. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully siphon off the bulk of this liquid. And this gold down here is really fine. I don't want to get it um, back into the liquid column. I don't want to disturb it, stir it up. I want it to just lay on the bottom of the beaker or stick to the sides like it is. So I'm going to very gently, with a small hose, siphon this liquid off. So let me do that first. And then we'll get to further steps of cleaning up the gold. Okay, since I've been doing this for quite a while, getting gold out of electronic equipment, I'm used to dealing with these dirty solutions and I've developed some methods for handling them. This siphoning is one way without stirring up that super fine gold in there and sucking it up. I want to leave it in the beaker. Get this down in here and there we go. So I'm using a small hose, so it takes a little longer because, you know, it's not moving much liquid, but it's not creating a lot of currents in the liquid either to stir up the gold. The gold's going to tend to stay put right where it is. I am siphoning the liquid into my temporary stock pot, just a two and a half gallon plastic bucket. And uh, the liquid's going to sit in here for a while, well until the bucket's full generally, and then I'll pour it off into my main stock pot. This gives a chance for any gold I drag over with the siphoning to settle to the bottom of this bucket. And it is much easier to clean out of this bucket than it is out of my main stock pot. So from time to time I will clean the gold out of uh, the bottom of this bucket and uh, recover it. And it's generally pretty fine, dirty gold. So I'll use the same methods on uh, cleaning up the gold that I get out of the bottom of this temporary stock pot that I'm using here to clean up the gold I'm getting out of this beaker. So I'll, you don't have to watch this whole thing. We'll be back once it's done. Just about got it. And of course, while I'm in the middle of siphoning, something I've got going on in the fume hood suddenly needs my attention, but I'm going to finish this first. I don't want to suck up a lot of gold. Try and get as much of this dirty green liquid out of here as I can without sucking up a lot of gold. Okay, so there's that done. Okay, so here's our gold after siphoning off the bulk of that green liquid. Let's see if I can get a good focus on it. Yeah, it's not quite the right color. There's a lot of it stuck to the sides of the beaker. This definitely needs a little cleaning up. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to redissolve this in aqua regia right here in this beaker that I precipitated it from. That way, as the uh, aqua regia liquid in there warms up and starts refluxing, evaporating and recondensing on the sides of the beaker, it will wash all of this fine gold stuck to the sides of the beaker down and it will all get dissolved 
the inside of the beaker will get cleaned up. It will be sparkling clean. Aqua Reed is great for that. And all this gold will go back into solution. It will be able to filter out any nastiness and then reprecipitate it as much cleaner gold from a much cleaner solution. So let me get it in the fume hood and we'll make a little bit of aqua regia and get this stuff to redissolve. So here's our dirty gold in the fume hood. The burner's still a little warm from a previous project, so the stuff's starting to warm up in there. Let me get some uh, uriatic acid in here. Don't need a lot to dissolve this gold, but I'm going to put in more than I need because I find that uh, having the extra liquid for the uh, base metal salts to dissolve in helps clean up the gold. Helps take it away from the gold. So, add a little bit of extra muriatic acid. And it's not going to take much nitric acid at all to dissolve this little bit of gold. Let me see if I can get about... go with about a milliliter and see how that does. I'll put in more later if needed. But one milliliter might do it. There's really not much gold there. So let's see. We turn the burner back on. And this should be fairly quick. Because the hot plate's still warm. So this should warm up and this gold should go into solution fairly quickly. And as the refluxing starts, we should clean up the inside of the beaker too. Yeah, only a few minutes in and the gold is disappearing quick. It's all going into solution. So we'll just let it cook for now until it's all gone. That's been a few more minutes. The gold is almost completely gone. The stuff on the sides of the beaker is starting to disappear as we get the aqua regia recondensing on the sides and running down. So probably just a few more minutes and this will be done. Alright, all the gold has dissolved. The inside of the beaker is nice and clean. We've got everything back in solution. So it's time to denox it. So let me pour in, well first off, So as this stuff's been bubbling and boiling in here, there's been a mist of pregnant solution has come up and got on the walls and the watch glass of the beaker there. So I'm going to wash the uh, pregnant solution off the watch glass so we don't lose that. A little bit of gold there, but you know, not much, but we don't want to lose it. So I have a solution here, uh, a saturated solution of sulfamic acid. We're going to use this for denoxing. So yep, this is going to destroy any remaining nitric acid in there. And one of the things it does is convert some of the nitric acid into sulfuric acid. So I don't have to put a squirt of, of sulfuric acid in there to uh, get things like uh, lead out as lead sulfate because this produces some sulfuric acid as it destroys the nitric. We'll wash the rest of the sulfamic acid in there just to make sure we've got good denoxing that way. And I turned the heat off a little while ago. It's still warm. What I'm going to do is going to add some ice to it. This is going to cool it down and dilute it and allow any lead sulfate or or silver chloride or anything else that shouldn't be in this stuff to fall out of solution. Um, all that stuff's a lot less soluble in cold dilute liquid than it is in hot acidic liquid. Okay, So we'll just let that cool down and then we'll be able to filter it now a lot of people ask me, do I use distilled water ice for this sort of thing? And the question is, at this stage in the game, no. Uh, this stuff isn't pure enough to worry about using distilled water on it yet. After about three refinings, when I'm trying to get my gold as pure as I can get it before I melt it down into bars or ingots or rounds, um, yes, I will use distilled water. Although, I'm usually not in such a hurry that I need to ice it. 
what I'll do is I'll dilute the solution with about an equal amount of distilled water and just let it sit until it comes up to ambient overnight whatever it takes and I'll get the same process out without the hassle of trying to make ice cubes from distilled water so there's the answer to that question so we'll just let this melt and then we'll get it filtered and then we'll drop the gold out of it again and look at the look at the lovely color of the liquid now is that a much nicer color than that lime green kool-aid we started with that's beautiful that's what a solution of gold is supposed to look like okay we'll be back when we're ready for filtration all right let's get this stuff filtered so we can drop it again I'm going to do a quick defiltration on it, just so I can get it right back in the fume hood and get some SMB into it. And get it dropping again. So this shouldn't take too long. There's not a lot of uh, particulates in here. This should go pretty quick. And I'll meet you back in the fume hood once it's all filtered. Look at that filtrate. Coming through nice, clean, and clear compared to what I'm filtering, which is slightly cloudy. That is beautiful. And it's a whole lot better color than what we started with. Yes, indeed. Okay, let me finish this up so we can drop the gold. All right, I'm just at the point of washing the last of the pregnant solution out of the filter and the glass frit down here in the funnel and then when this once that's done we can uh, drop the gold again and it should be much cleaner gold just rinsing it through with some distilled water okay let's uh see if we can re-precipitate this gold make it a little cleaner I mean, that, that, that solution, the liquid solution color, is just so much nicer than what we started with. No more lime green Kool-Aid, yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to put in some sodium metabisulfite, and I get mine in Stump Out by Boneed. It's a stump remover. Now, not every stump remover on the market has sodium metabisulfite in it. The Boneed Stump Out does. Uh, some stump removers are potassium nitrate, which is a very useful chemical in its own right, but not for precipitating gold. So let me get the fume hood going. And we'll get some SMB in there and we'll get this gold precipitating. Not a lot of gold in there, I'm thinking, so this probably won't take a huge amount of SMB. Three spoonfuls in and give it a stir, and we'll see what that gets us. Oh, yeah, the color's fading. Look at that. Look at that color fade right away. And the next step should be darkening. In fact, I got a little bit of gold plating on my stir rod. If you're stirring it when the color's fading, you can get gold plating on your stir rod clean that off. Just let that sit and sooner or later it should darken up. There we are. It just took a minute. It's darkening up nicely. We're getting a gold drop. So we'll just leave that sit and see what falls out of solution. I bet it's going to be nicer than what we had before. Well it's the next morning and look what has settled out. So is that much cleaner looking gold or what? It looks like it's much better consolidated on the bottom of the beaker. It's not stuck to the sides. The liquid is crystal clear and almost completely colorless. We may have dragged a little bit of the green color over because I didn't get all of the green liquid off of the gold, but that is much nicer and cleaner gold than what we started with, for sure. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to decant this liquid off into my temporary stock pot and we'll start giving this gold some uh, boils. Um, usually I boil it first in hydrochloric acid and then a series of distilled water boils to clean the acid out of it. 
and then I'll dry it out and weigh it. Okay, this stuff, since it's not a fine colloidal suspension like it was before, I can actually just sort of decant it off into my temporary stock pot without too much trouble. The gold just sort of slides down to the bottom of the beaker. It doesn't waft back up into the water column with the least provocation like the other stuff would, although we do have some floaty gold heading for the exit here, which I will intercept before it gets there. And the cure for floaty gold is to just hit it with a spritz of distilled water from my water bottle and just wait for it to settle and then I can pour off the rest of this liquid. And then once I get the liquid poured off, I will transfer the gold to a much smaller beaker for the acid and distilled water boils. And we'll get this stuff really nicely cleaned up. Okay, let's get this gold cleaned up a little bit better. Fume hood on here. Give it a muriatic acid boil. And some distilled water boils. And then dry it out and weigh it up. Be much better than what we started with. Alright. Hot plate on. Get that cooking. Well, there's a hydrochloric acid boil going on. I'm going to let this boil for a couple minutes at about this level. And then I'll take it off the heat, let it cool down some, and then decant off the liquid into my temporary stock pot. Replace the liquid with uh, distilled water, give it at least three distilled water boils, and then dry out the gold. And there's the first of three distilled water boils. Just keep this video from getting too long. I'll be back after all the distilled water boils are done. Okay, there's the gold on the still warm hot plate, slowly drying out. So once it's dried out, we'll be able to get a weight on it. See how much we got there. Well, there's the gold. Doesn't look like so much now that it's all dried up. But, let's give it a wait and see exactly how much is here. Well, it's not very much gold, but at least it's good clean gold. Much cleaner than what we started with. Let's weigh it up and see what we got. unstuck from inside the beaker here. Some of it's still pretty fine. Probably carried some contamination over in that little bit of green liquid. But certainly this is a whole lot of whole lot cleaner than it was. And what do we got? We got 0.34 of a gram. Okay, that's how I clean up gold that's dropped out of really dirty solutions. I hope you'll find this helpful in the future if you're doing the same thing. If you found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. And check out my second channel, Electric Geek 64. There's good stuff going on there if you're at all interested in electronics or retro computing. So check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one.